Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the basics of using the drag and drop API. Okay, so uh, this API is really easy to use and as you may already know, um, it allows you to drag and drop any element. Okay, um, it's also commonly used to uh, allow support for dragging and dropping files in from the operating system for things like file upload forms and things of that nature. Um, although, if you do want to know specifically on how to create a drag and drop file I'll upload form. I've actually got a whole video dedicated to doing just that, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description below or inside the comments section. But uh, today's video is going to be uh, the drag and drop API in general. Okay, so we're going to be creating this right here. We have essentially we have we have two drop zones for this element right here, which we can then drag and drop uh, between the two. So. Like I said, it's really easy to achieve something like this, and I'll also briefly be covering um, the actual uh, process of dragging in files. Okay, so let's go inside uh, this tab right here and begin from scratch. So as we can see right here, the support for drag and drop isn't there. So let's add that right now, but first let's go inside the text editor, and we have something like this currently. I've just minimized the CSS for clarity. All of this stuff isn't too important, but as we can see, uh, we just have a um, have a few CSS styles on the actual drop zones themselves. So uh, the actual two uh, red and blue uh, drop zones, um, and then we've also got some styling for when the drop zone gets hovered over. So as we saw earlier, when you are dragging, the drop zones lose their opacity by half. So it's just simply a class to achieve that. And lastly, the draggable element has a width, height, and a background. So um, in the HTML we can see currently, we, uh, we, we just have those, those two drop zones as well as the draggable element starting inside the first one. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go inside the JavaScript and of course uh, start implementing what we just saw. Uh, so first off, the very first thing to do is actually going to be inside the HTML. So we need to signify that this this black square um, is actually draggable. Okay, so to achieve this, we can simply add the draggable equals true uh, attribute to the HTML element. Okay, so now if I save this and refresh, we can see uh, we can now actually drag around um, the actual uh, div. Okay, so that's working perfectly fine. Um, the rest of this is going to be JavaScript. Okay, so let's go back inside here now. And first, we're going to get we're going to get a reference to the actual draggable element itself, the actual black div. So we can say right here uh, const uh, draggable element is equal to document dot query selector. We're going to be selecting the the ID of my draggable element, just like that. Okay, and now um, we're going to add an event listener. Okay, we're going to say draggable elements dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the drag start event. Okay, and from this we can grab hold of the event object inside the E parameter. And right here, um, we need to set what data is going to be associated with the actual drag. But first, I just want to console.log E. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing, um, we can see right here, if I start to drag, we can see the actual, um, the event appears inside the console. If I scroll down, we have right here this data transfer object. So this data transfer object right here is important to how this is going to work. Essentially, you're going to specify what data gets dragged around. In this case right here, we're going to essentially grab hold of the ID of this black div. Okay, and then when we actually drop the div onto this element, this element right here is going to grab hold of that ID that was sent alongside the drag and then simply move the element across. Okay, so let's go back inside here now. I might just increase the size of the code here um, to make it a bit easier to read. Um, so right here, um, we are going to now uh, simply assign this information. So we can say right here, e.data transfer dot set data. 
okay? And we can say right here, set data text forward slash plain, okay? Then we can say draggable element dot ID. So right here, we are assigning the information in the form of a text, so text forward slash plain. Um, there are many different uh, MIME types you can specify here for the data type. However, I'm not gonna be covering all of those in today's video. Um, a lot of the time, you're gonna be dragging through text, um, so it should be fine for this example, okay? Now right here, we can see we are setting the data to be simply the ID. In this case right here, it's gonna simply be my draggable element in the form of a string. Okay, so now as we move around or as, as the actual drag happens right here, um, the drag event uh, keeps hold of that ID. Okay, so now it's going to be as simple as uh, listening for the drop event on side this, um, on, uh, on the actual drop zone and then simply grabbing the ID out of the actual drag event. Okay, so with that being said, Let's go back inside here and we're gonna be uh, looping through each one of our drop zones. So down here, we can say for uh, const drop zone of document.query selector all, okay? We're gonna pass through here the class of drop dash zone. So this right here is of course going to select every single drop zone we have. In this case, we have a total of two, the orange or the red and the light blue one, okay? Cool, so for each of these drop zones, we can first listen for um, the drag over events. Okay, so we're gonna say here drop zone dot add event listener. We're gonna listen, like I said, for the drag over events. And for this one, essentially, this is just saying whenever um, something is being dragged over the drop zone. And this event here actually fires off every few hundred milliseconds. Okay, so um, let's go inside here and we're gonna say console.log, let's just say um, decode as the message, okay? Let's save this and refresh, then we can start dragging over the element and we can see right there in the console, we start getting those events coming through, okay? Um, like I said, they're occurring very quickly. Now in order for this element to allow elements to be dropped inside of it or on top of it, um, we need to prevent the default behavior of the actual um, event object right here. So we're gonna say right here, e.preventDefault. That is a requirement in order for this to work. Very shortly, we're gonna be uh, changing this code. Oh, you know what, let's do it right now. Let's go inside here real quickly and we're gonna say drop zone dot class list dot add. We're gonna be adding the drop dash zone dash dash over class to the actual drop zone. So now we should see the opacity being changed. We're adding this class right here, very straightforward. So now uh, saving this and refreshing, we can see now upon hovering over it, um, the opacity is going to change just like that. Now obviously, um, it is not going to go away. We need to implement that manually. So, with that being said, uh, that is the first step to allowing a drop on the actual element. Um, the second step is going to be uh, listening for the drop event. Okay, so we can say here drop zone dot add event listener. Let's listen now for the drop event. Okay, so in this case, we need to once again say e dot prevent default. In this case right here, um, for example, the default behavior of dropping an element or a file, okay, uh, dropping a file uh, onto the actual web page is going to be to open it up in a new tab or the same tab, uh, okay? So uh, by saying prevent default, we're gonna prevent that default behavior from occurring. Uh, so now we're gonna say simply console.log Let's log out the event object. Now, I just wanna quickly uh, copy and paste a comment from a um, from my reference here. So we can just say up here, uh, when the draggable element is over a drop zone, and uh, for the second one here, we can simply say, uh, when the draggable element is dropped onto the drop zone. So now, saving this and refreshing, we can see here, upon dropping the element, we get right here, drag event inside the console. Now. Right here, we have the data transfer object containing our information, okay? Um, so, with that being said, 
we're going to simply go inside here, we're going to grab the ID and then do something. Okay, so back inside here, we're going to say, uh, we're going to make a few constants. We're going to say const dropped element ID, okay, is equal to uh, e.datatransfer.getData. We're going to get data in the, in the, uh, in the actual form of, uh, what is it? So it is text slash plain, just like that. Okay, so uh, once we have that, uh, we now have the actual ID. So we're setting the data in text plane to the ID and now we're simply getting that same data. So now we can say console.log dropped element ID. Okay, save this and refresh and we get right here in the console upon dropping, we get my draggable element, the data that was set up inside here. Okay, if I was to say, hey, I'm Dom, for example, uh, save this and refresh, do it again, we get, hey, I'm Dom. Okay, so that is what we're doing right there. So now, it's gonna be as simple as just saying, you know what, we can now say const uh, dropped element is equal to um, uh, document dot get element by ID and pass through here the dropped element ID. Now, in this case, of course, um, we actually have a reference to the draggable element, but uh, think about scenarios where you actually don't have this reference, uh, you know, uh, available to you. Okay, so in the case of multiple elements, maybe there's more logic behind this. So um, in most cases, you're going to want to use the actual data as your means of, you know, figuring out uh, which elements to drag and drop. Okay, so now we have this right here. We can simply say uh, dropped element. Uh, sorry, um, um, uh, my mistake. It needs to be uh, drop zone. So, so uh, drop zone dot append child and then pass through here uh, dropped element just like that. Okay, so now it's going to simply move the dropped element, the actual black box, from that side to this side. Okay, so now let's just uh, save this and refresh. And we can see right here, upon dragging across and letting go, it's, um, it stays there. Okay, so um, it can now go back and forth. It's going to work perfectly fine. So, uh, like I said, we're simply grabbing the elements using the ID. Okay, and then we're simply moving it to the drop zone in which you actually dropped the element onto. Okay, so now it's going to be uh, very simple to uh, remove the actual class of drop zone over in the case of a drop. So we can say right here, copy and then paste this and we can say remove uh, the drop zone over class. So now upon dropping, it is going to remove that opacity as we just saw right there. And now there's going to be one more place um, we're going to need to remove that opacity. So that's going to be on drag leave. Okay, so let's go back inside here and we can just say up here, drop zone dot add event listener, uh, listen for the drag leave event. And for this one, we can simply say, once we're inside here, uh, drop zone, the same thing is down here. So we can just copy this and paste it right up here. And we can say as the actual comment, uh, when the draggable element uh, no longer is over the drop zone. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing, we can see right here, if I was to drag across, it goes away as you move or as you leave the actual, um, the actual drop zone. And it's all working perfectly fine. So that is the basics right there on how to use uh, the drag and drop API. So moving on to dragging across files, it's going to be uh, very easy to achieve this. Okay, so it makes use of the file API in JavaScript. So um, let's just go right down here and we're going to say uh, inside the drop event, we're going to say uh, once again console.log e um, and just leave it like that. So now we're going to save this and then refresh. And as we can see, of course, upon dragging across the actual box, we get, of course, something like this. Now, if we scroll down, we can see we actually get um, down here inside the data transfer object, we get right here um, the actual files uh, property. Okay, so this contains a file list. So if I was to now actually drag in a file, okay, just like this, um, we obviously get an error right here because we haven't actually, we haven't handled a situation where we actually have a file, um, but moving back up to right up here, um, the file list is unfortunately still empty in this example, but behind the scenes it actually contains 
um, the file which we just dragged in. Okay, so to demonstrate that, uh, let's go inside the code once again and we're going to say uh, console.log e .data transfer files um, just like that. Okay, so now accessing it directly, if I save this and then refresh and then try again to drag in that HTML file or that, that um, the actual text file, uh, we can see now we get the length of 1 and we get right here in the first index of the file list we actually get our drag and drop.txt file. Okay, so from that right there, you can use all of the different methods for the file. Um, if it's an image, you can of course convert the image into a, um, a, a an actual data URL. I've also got a video on doing that if you want to check that one out. Um, but you can do basically whatever you want with this file. Okay, now I want to demonstrate real quickly also um, situations where you want to uh, populate an input field. Okay, so let's do that really quickly here. Um, let's go back inside the HTML and uh, we are going to just add right up here um, a new input field with a type of file and we can give this an ID. Let's just do for the ID my file input. Okay, just like that. Uh, so now we're going to basically just say inside the actual drop event, we're going to say document.getElementById and pass through here the my file input field ID. Then we're going to say simply dot files is equal to, then you can simply just say e data transfer and then files. So this right here is going to assign the actual uh, file list of the actual drop event onto um, the input uh, field, okay. Um, you may uh, you may also want to actually do something like this, where you say file and allow multiple files, okay. But uh, now, basically, if I was to save this and refresh once again, um, we can see now we get no file chosen. If I was to drag and drop this file in, we get right here drag drop.txt. So we've essentially assigned the file list of the actual drag event or the drop event onto the input field itself. And now, of course, you can do whatever you want with this input field. Okay, so um, there it is. That is how to use the drag and drop API. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.